So we've got Toby Origbu joining us right now. Uh, he is currently on a travel trip in New Jersey, resides in Charlotte, and was already doing door knocks this morning and stole the policy. And today he's going to talk to us about what he does, how he, how he gets himself to the level at where he's ascended to an elite level of production. And at the same stand, uh, we're going to focus on putting himself in a position to build a team as well. So without further ado, so honored to have you on here, Toby. How are you doing today, my man? Hey, what's up, man? How are you, brother? I'm good, buddy. I'm good. Good to see yeah. you. Good to, good to have good you on to, here. Good to see you too, man. Thank you for having me. Great. Can you hear me? Because I'm crystal clear. You sound okay, perfect. Perfect, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So I, um, you know, what I respect so much about what you're doing here is that you're, you've put yourself in a position to win, right? So many people can go look in the CRM and go, hey, there's only 15 leads here. And you're like, hey, there's 2,000 leads in New Jersey. Why not just go to New Jersey and out there door knock and do what it takes? And so I just wanted to applaud you for that to start out and to say that winners make it happen no matter what the cause, no matter what the, what the, what the obstacle, no matter what the challenge. They just figure it out and find a way. So I applaud you for that. But what I'd love to just back up a little bit, because a lot of people, they see your numbers, they see you, and they go, what's, what, 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 what is, what's his story? What can I pull from maybe some parallels that, that you have going on to whom they are? So I'd love you to kind of share a little bit about your background and maybe who introduced you to FFL. Okay, perfect. Um, so I was, I was actually in um, a practice company for about a year. And um, I had seen basically a few individuals from that company come over to Family First Life. Um, now, when I had gotten in the industry, I actually got a few emails from, from FFL, um, about 100% comp, but I thought it was like some scam or something like that. So I showed my, uh, my managers over there. I said, hey, look at this stuff. Um, they said, oh, no, no, that's, that's not real. Um, so I put my head down basically over there and went to work for a whole year. And we tried to obviously build an agency and all that stuff. Um, at the end of the year, we kind of looked around and, and none of our people were making any money. So it, it was, it was pretty bad. Um, at that point, I, I just figured that it, it wasn't, it wasn't sustainable. There was no way to really build a, a real business. Um, so I, I kind of saw a few people that had left and decided to kind of reach out to them. Um, a lot of people started killing it here that, that I knew from the previous experience. Um, so I, I reached out to Marissa and Ashley. I just on, on Instagram basically messaged them, got on a phone call with both of them. They answered all of my questions. Um, and, you know, fast forward four months, you know, we're here. There you go, man. Four months. Yep. So what did they um, got to got to know? What did they post on social media that intrigued you? It was just a lot of people winning, man. Um, it wasn't really even about them. It was just, you know, I, and actually talked about this as well. It's just so many different agents, you know, a brand new agent comes in and, you know, sells 2K, you know, and, and 100% comp and $11 lead cost. And so that, that just intrigued me when I saw too many names that I couldn't even keep track of. Um, I was like, something's happening there. And then I obviously looked at the, the, the volume that Family First Life as an entire company was doing after seven years in business. And I compared it to the, the experience I was in and they had been in, in business 10 times longer. You know, so it, it was, it was uh, logically made more sense, basically. For sure, man. Well, good. Well, um, so yes, yeah, so we talk a lot about recruiting and, and sharing the business. Social media is a phenomenal way where you can get the message out of what we have to offer here. So don't, don't stop doing that to all those that are doing it. We also have a lot of different marketing channels that people can jump into. And that's what makes this business fun is that what we have to offer doesn't cost anything. It doesn't, there's no startup costs. There's no ongoing fees, et cetera. It's just show up and get to work. So I love that you saw that here. So I'd love if you would just maybe give a, a little bit more color, a little more background about, you know, how you ended up in your practice company, maybe what you were doing before, any background, just so people can kind of get to know Toby a little more. Got you. Yeah. So I was, uh, I was, um, after graduating school, uh, which I graduated in, in um, I forget the year, but Slippery Rock University was a small town in, in PA, uh, about 45 minutes from Pittsburgh. So graduated from there um, and traveled basically to, I was, that was in Pennsylvania. So traveled to Charlotte, North Carolina. I liked it and, and decided I'm just going to stay there because I had nothing else to do with my life at that point. Um, 
I, I got into logistics. I became a logistics broker. So over the phone, helping, you know, um, companies like Walmart or CVS move freight, basically. Um, that was good. Again, it just wasn't something that I saw myself doing long term. So mistakenly found myself in the industry. I mean, I can't even remember the, the, the ad that, that got me in, but I just found myself in a room and it ended up being life insurance, which I didn't know it really was. So it was some sort of um, technique they used to get me in there, but it worked, man. So. Cool, man. Well, there you go. It worked. So, um, okay, cool. So now you're here. Now you're at FFL month four. Um, so we'll get to your goals at the end. I'll let you think about what your big, big goal is for a couple different things, but I'd love to know. And, and the new producers would love to know, right? What are leads are you running? Like, is it, is it, you know, do you, does Toby have the secret leads? Do you have, do you and Sean have like a hookup where he like sends you the, all the buyers and the, the quick closes? Like what, what leads are you running? Um, 100% CRM leads. So, um, I would say my lead, my lead split would be about 80% instance, uh, 15, um, 15% old internet leads and then 5% old mortgage leads. So that would be my, but all CRM leads basically. And then how, how are you dialing them? Phone burner. Um, oh, I mean, you, that, like, that's, you like phone burner? That's been a game changer for me, man. All day, every single day, it's been a game changer. How do you, just give a 30 second, it doesn't have to, a commercial on how you use phone burner. Um, so I, I set it up in a way where it's basically dialing people three times. Um, but it, I mean, it's insane. I mean, I used to, and I was a pretty slow dialer. So it's definitely made me more efficient. I mean, I would, I would, on average dial 25 to 30 people just again because I was slow so that was a fault of mine but with phone burner I mean I'm I mean the numbers are just insane I mean I'm throwing 90 dials an hour um upwards upwards and that's still booking appointments talking to people for a couple minutes so I mean it's just been a game changer for me perfect so you pull them out you order, get on the CRM so CRM leads new CRM leads and old CRM leads yeah, everything in the CRM it, I so mean, do you, have you ever had a brand new mortgage? Have you ever run brand new mortgage? No, no, not yet. <laughs> so there's a lot of people out there that think that the only way to make money is brand new mortgage leads, which are 63 to $80 leads. It takes six weeks to come in and they take six weeks to come in and they're, and they're eight, 63 to $80. Now, granted, they're a fine lead. They're a male lead. The client fills it out. They send it back. Buyer intent's there. But I mean, you can get eight instant leads that came in today for the same money which Correct. you're like i agree yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, I agree. 100%. so for, for me was um the the reason i hadn't actually jumped on mortgage yet was because i'm not patient and crm leads i mean you get them now and they're in your they're in your crm in two minutes so that's been that's that's been the main reason why i love those and, and i think yeah. they're great leads as well so i can't complain with them Perfect. And then, so let's talk about, but okay, so what is the, uh, what's the lead budget? Um, so last month I put out at least, uh, somewhere around 13,000, um, okay. a couple hundred over 13,000, but it was around there. You know what? That seems so, I don't want to say it seems low cause it's still 13 grand, but when you're buying instance and aged internet leads, they're cheaper. Like I talked to agents. They're like, I'm spending 4,000 a month on brand new mortgage, but you do the math. They're getting, they're getting a, a fifth of the amount of leads you're getting. So when you're spending 13 grand, you're getting nearly like 1300 leads, yep. which you can book a lot of appointments at 1300 leads, especially 80% of them are new, 20% of them are aged, but the aged ones are half the price too. So there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, insight in their leaders and managers out there on, on how to write big production is just buy more leads, throw them in a phone burner. Um, yeah. So, so it was, it, it gave me a lot of volume. It gave me a lot of shots. Um, and again, like, like you said, I, I'm, I'm on the road as well. So it's basically just giving me an opportunity to, you know, beat old leads. It really doesn't matter. Just give me more shots to take, basically. Agreed. Well, I would, we would be doing the audience a disservice if you wouldn't. I mean, I'd love if you'd give us some of your phone script and how you, you know, what you say on the phone and we can role play or you can just run off it however you want to do it. I mean, they've heard enough role playing, but I know, uh, but I'd love whatever you're saying is it's working. Yeah, so you can role play with me, Brady. Got it. Ring, ring. Hello? Grady? Yes? Grady, this is Toby. I was actually uh, getting back to you, man, about that request that you had sent into my office for the state-regulated life insurance programs. Um, Grady, this was the one you had put down 10-10-75 as your date of birth. 
I'm assuming that's correct, right? Yes, that's right. Okay, perfect. Now, Grady, it also looks like you put on here as your delivery address for the information, 2300 South Boulevard. Um, that's correct, right? Correct. Okay, perfect. So Grady, like I'm sure you saw on them and it's all non-medical. Um, so it's basically state regulated programs, all non-medical. I'm, I'm basically the state underwriter. So my job is basically to go over the information with you, let you know what options you have available to you. Now are you working, um, Grady, or are you retired? Um, I'm working. And are you married or single? I'm married. Okay, perfect. Um, so great. What I'm going to do is I'll basically do you a favor. Um, I'm going to put you down on my schedule for tomorrow evening. I know you said you're married. So my guess is typically you and the wife would be home around six, six 30. Sounds about right. Uh, maybe seven, seven. Okay. I don't have a seven Grady. I don't have a seven 30. So what I'll do is I'll put you down between seven 45 to eight o'clock. Does that sound better? That sounds fine. Perfect. Any reason you wouldn't be home at that time, Grady? No, I can't think of one. Okay, perfect. So do me a favor here, man. Go ahead and grab a piece of pen and paper. I want to give you a security code. Let me know when you're ready. Ready. Okay, perfect. Um, take down my name. Grady, my name is Toby. That's T-O-B-E. The security code is T415. You got that? Okay. Toby, T415. Yep. And we are scheduled for tomorrow, and that's going to be between 7.45 to 8 o'clock. Okay. You got that? Yep. Okay, perfect. Now, Grady, just before I let you go, is there any reason on earth that I would be struggling to find that uh, that house? Um, no. I mean, is it you got a GPS on your phone? Yes, I do. So is the, is the number 2300, is that going to be on the house or um, on the mailbox? I'll be on the house. Okay, perfect. All right. Well, so great. I got you locked in tomorrow, 745 to 8 o'clock. Before I let you go, man, quick test here for you. Uh, what was that code I gave you again? T415. You're listening to me, man. All right, perfect. So I'll see you tomorrow, um, 745 to 8 o'clock. Sounds good. See you tomorrow. Yep. It's good, man. It. It's good. That's it. Delivery. Say that, say that line. It was like the second thing you said. We've got you scheduled. What was that? How did you say that? Um... What part exactly? It was like, we've got you scheduled for your delivery address as this, this, okay. and this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I basically say delivery address just to be assumptive. Um, so the, 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 the delivery address you had put down on here was 2300 South Boulevard. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, perfect. So that's basically what Dude, I do there. The psychology of that is so good. People love, I mean, people don't love mail, but they love stuff. Right. So if you're calling and you've got the packet or the, the stuff or you get the delivery address. Oh, yeah, that's my delivery. Make sure it gets to my house. That's the right. No, I, I get it delivered here. I, I, I stay over there, but I live right. Delivery, man. That's good. Yeah. Good work. Any. So anything that any um, if you do like do, how do you do a quick set? Is it kind of uh, similar? Or what do you, yeah. So, so what do you sometimes try? I. Sometimes I actually love quick sets because, I mean, it just gives me an opportunity to get off the phone. But. Obviously, you want to make sure you kind of solidify it as best as you can. So if someone said, basically, call me back later, um, you know, I would say, perfect, Grady, that's not a problem. What time do you get home from work tomorrow? Right. And then they say, well, I get home around, I typically get home around five. All right. Well, Grady, not a problem. Um, this was just a courtesy call to let you know that I'm the local state underwriter that's been assigned to you. They have me shout out to you tomorrow. Um, I'm going to do you a favor because I know you're working all day. So what I'm going to do is I'll put you down on the evening between 6.30 to 7 o'clock. It's not going to be a long process. My job is just to get you the information that you requested, go over your options with you. Now, are you married, Grady, or are you single? You say you're married. I say, okay, perfect. Just make sure your wife is there for me. Um, that way we can go over the options together. Sounds good? Yes. All right. Have a good one. Easy. Slam dunk, man. Yep. Just doing it. Assumptive, strong, practiced. Were you always this good when you first started? No, <laughs> no, I, and, and I'm still still learning, man. What is your show ratio, you think, just a ballpark? Say you book 30 appointments in a week. Say there are 30 good appointments. How many are you, you going to how many are going to be there? So I, I would I would really book 30 solid appointments. I mean, that's, that, that would be really good. But if I book 30 appointments, I expect 18 to be there, 18 to 20. So 60 plus percent. Correct. Okay. Yep. 
That's it. That was the thing. I was talking to a young man the other day and he was talking about his struggles. And he said that his biggest thing he was struggling with was that his show ratio was low. He was averaging 38 to 40 percent. And that's that's part of the business is if we can just increase the amount of people we sit with, they want the stuff. Yeah. They want the product. They want the protection. They're concerned with their family. That's why they fill the information out. So, you know, that's even even for a guy as good as you are at a production standpoint, 60 percent. I mean, imagine we could get you to. I mean, I don't know. That's that phone script was so so legit, but um, but that's still seeing his insight. That's twenty percent more than this other young man that I was talking to, right? I mean, sixty percent show ratio gets you hundred k issue paid, not a bad deal. So, cool. Well, so I love to transition though. Uh, thank you for the phone script. But let's talk about in home because there's some things that you're doing that others aren't, and they they they're they're on here wanting to know. So what is um. You know, maybe we just start at the door. Okay, how do you approach it? Let's go from from the door or the car. Maybe you've got a routine you do. You you kick your shoes twice and walk backwards around the car. I don't know. There's some <laughs> some some someone's gonna magically fall. Dude, I as people started. I talked to one guy and he's like, you know what? I always button the top button on my polos. And I was like, well, you sell fifty thousand a month and forever like two years. I button the top button on my polo. <laughs> so what are things that let's let's go in home from the tape from the car to the quotes. Right. So um, typically in the car, I, I obviously like to point to training and podcast. Um, I, I tap into Paul McLean a lot just because he's he's huge on mindset. Um, and typically in the field, we need that, you know, going going from appointment to appointment. So I, I would be listening to, you know, 80 percent chance I'm listening to, to Paul McLean. So my mind's already right. Um, I, I, you know, I, I, I drive into the, the, the driveway. I, I get out the car as fast as possible. I don't like that to be a, a long process. And then I just head, I head right into the apartment. I have the, I have my bag with me. Um, I knock on the door as, as, uh, as, as loud as possible without like actually scaring anybody. And, you know, they come to the door, they, they open up the door. I, I introduce myself. Hey, it's Toby. I'm here for our appointment. Um, about 30, 40% of, you know, of the time they say, Oh God, I forgot about you. And, and I'm like, well, Grady, that's, that's perfect. Good thing I didn't forget about you. Um, do you want my shoes on or shoes off? Right. Um, so we basically jump right in at that point on the walk to the table. I don't like to, I don't like silence. So I like that to be some sort of natural conversation going on. Nothing pre-planned, man. It could be anything like the dogs, the kids, the TV, um, just natural conversation on the walk to the table. And then once I sit on the table is basically business. Um, I like the husband and the wife to be at one side. So I, I probably would like to sit at the head of the table, probably some control thing. Um, and then the husband and wife to sit down on one side of the table. That way I'm not like turning my head left and right. Um, and then I basically pull out my, my iPod where I have the lead already. And I basically ask them, um, you know, which one of them filled it out. In this case, it's a husband and wife. So which one of them filled it out? Um, you know, if it was the, if it was the husband, I would say, Okay, Joe, wait, was Mary aware that you had sent this in? If they say yes, um, and I picked this up from training as well, but if they say yes, um, I would say, well, perfect. Now, it's good to see that you guys communicate because most, most couples don't. Um, so already they're, they kind of dropped their guard a little bit. And if he said no, then I would basically say, well, not a problem either. Um, sounds like you're just like me. You want to make sure your family is taken care of. At that point, I will basically ask him, so guys, 99% of the time, tip families that send this um, request into my office, they have the same major concerns. The, the same three major concerns is, God forbid, you know, if they died yesterday, they want to make sure that today that their families are not struggling with the funeral costs, final expenses, the, um, you know, all, of the, all of the financial hardships that would be transferred to, to the family. They want to make sure that's already taken care of. The second biggest concern, Grady, is you know, if something happens to a family, just like all of us, we have people that depend on us financially. Most families want to make sure that, hey, they have a couple years of their income protected um, to leverage. That way, when they die, their families don't have to lose the home or, 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 or change their lifestyle. Out of those two concerns, what was your biggest concern? Not leave expenses to my family. Okay. And your family who would be responsible for that Brady if, if something did happen to you uh, my wife Chantel okay and my guest Chantel is here so okay um now had you guys talked about this prior or is this just something that 
uh, was triggered recently. Um, we've talked about it, but just, you know, I saw the ad online and clicked it and then you called within Got, an hour. Gotcha. It's just, you know, something that it's on our mind, but we just haven't dealt with it. Got you. Got you. Um, so just to, just to ask you a direct question here, Grady, was that more so just procrastination like a lot of families do? Or did you not qualify for this in, in the past? No, it's just procrastination. I'm pretty, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm decently healthy, chubby, but I'm healthy. Chubby, but healthy. Okay. Um, so Grady, God forbid something, just to make sure I got this down clear, something happens to you yesterday um, because you procrastinated, your wife is going to have to pick up all the pieces herself. Yeah, when you put it that way. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And at this point, I'll probably ask the wife a few questions, how she feels about that to get the emotion out. Um, so Grady, it, it sounds like from what you just said that you're done procrastinating about this stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got yeah. You. What do you got? Got you. Got you. Sounds good. So that's not a problem. That's why I'm here. We'll be able to make sure we take care of that for you today. Um, but before we jump into anything, Grady, this is um, my state license through my resident state of New Jersey, um, signed by the Commission of Insurance. As you can see at the back of this, I, I am a state underwriter and a broker, so I work with several different insurance companies, not just one. All that means for you today, Grady, is I'm going to be able to take a look at a few options and see which one works best for you. Okay? So there are going to be two objective, objectives we have here today, Grady. The first one is going to be health. Nothing else comes before that. It doesn't matter if you want the billion dollar policy or the, the $10,000 policy. I have to make sure that we verify the health. So I'm going to ask you a few questions. We're also going to get your HIPAA form done. That's going to let the insurance company know that you're serious. And it's going to let them know what you're going to be eligible for, basically. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, perfect. The second and most important thing, Grady, for me is the budget. I personally am big into the budget. So the last thing I'm going to do today, Grady, is put something in place for you that we are not 100% sure would be financially comfortable. Does that make sense? Yeah. Perfect. So I'm going to take a deep dive into the a deep dive into the budget to see what that exactly looks like. Um, and once we find the right fit, what I'm going to do is send up a request for coverage. Grady, I'm not the insurance company. A lot of my clients wish I was, but I don't make the final decision. So we're going to send up the application to the insurance company today. Um, it gives them two days up to two weeks to make a decision. They could either decline or approve you. They approve you. Perfect. All is well. Life is good. You're going to get a policy in the mail within 21 days. If they decline you, don't worry. It's not the end of the world. I'm not going to forget about you. I'll give you a call um, and, and pivot to a different company, basically. Does that make sense? Yeah. Perfect. And at that point, I just jump into the financial inventory. He's very good. Oh, that's very, very good, man. The emotional, do you find that when you don't do the emotional questions, like, mm -hmm. you know, procrastination, you know, because you'll get the client goes, hey, just show me the quotes and they try to rush you through. And I clearly know Toby does not get pushed around. Like you're sitting there like, this is my table. These are my chairs. Those curtains are mine too. Let's, uh, so let's, let's move forward in this and answer my question, sir. But do you, I mean, how, how does that go for you? Could you dig more into that emotional component and what that does for you setting up the sale? Yeah, so it's, it's just lessons I've learned, Grady, because I, I, I started doing that and I got success from it. And then for some reason, I stopped doing it. And then my closing ratio went from whatever it was to like 30%. And, and I was questioning, well, what's going on? What's, what's, what changed? But what changed was I, I, I made it so transactional. Like Bob is perfectly fine with making sure his wife never has to worry about food. He's just not fine if it's about paying $200 a month for 10,000. But if that 10,000 is gonna provide stability and, and food and a roof over the wife's head, he, that's, that makes more sense. So if you're, selling, if you're selling the dollar amount, you're gonna basically lose. But if you're selling the emotion, um, that's, where, that's where magic happens. So for me, I try to bring out that emotion very early, which basically lets me know if I'm staying in the home or if I'm leaving. Because if they're giving me pushback, and I'm letting them know this is the process that I have to follow. And they still keep giving me, oh, I'm not buying anything today. I'm not, I'm not, I truly would leave the house. I would probably try to talk it out a little bit for a couple of minutes, but if we're not on the same page, I'm probably just gonna leave the house and go to my next appointment. That's good. What would be the questions you'd have asked my wife? 
So if I go, yeah, yeah I've been procrastinating, I'm done procrastinating, something like that. And then you go, yeah. okay, and tell, what do you ask her? Perfect. So um, I've, I've focused on you for like a couple minutes. So I've, I've put you in a position where um, very respectfully, but where you, you, I've made you realize what's going on. So I'm going to look to your wife, um, Chantel, correct? Correct. Perfect. I'm going to look to Chantel and, and ask Chantel. So Chantel, God forbid. All right. So I'm going to ask this question from a place of care. God forbid you get on a, a knock on your door this evening with a bloody ID from the police officers saying Grady's not coming back. And when I mean he's not coming back, I mean he's gone forever. In that situation, in that case, what exactly what was your plan? Because you guys, like he said, procrastinated on this. So what was the plan as to how you were going to attack that? And then she's going to take three seconds to think about it and say, probably she's going to say, I've never thought about it. And then I'm going to ask her again. I understand that. And I know that. But right now we're thinking about it. So while you're thinking about it, what would you do? And she's going to say, well, I'm going to have to move out or live with my brother or live with my sister um, or ask for help. And then I'm just going to dig into that pain point. So if she said, I'm going to move in with my brother, I'm going to say, okay, is he married? Does he have his own family? Uh, where do they live? So if they live in Virginia, you're going to have to travel to Virginia. What about the house? Um, you know, what about the kids that you have here? All of those things I'm going to start diving into. And then I'm going to ask the wife, um, you know, Grady, I, I, I understand everything you said. And like you said, it was just procrastination, which I understand. I'm not mad at you for that. Um, but obviously you guys understand how important this stuff is. So Chantel, let me ask you this. Why haven't you pushed Grady to get this taken care of prior to, because obviously I'm here today and I know we're taking care of this now. So you guys have done the wise thing. But prior to today, why didn't you push Grady to take care of this? And then she's gonna say, well, um, we just haven't, you know, we just haven't, you know, we just haven't really, you know, we just wanted to talk about it for five years and 10 years. And then when we're 50 years old, um, I'm like, okay, well, we're gonna make sure we avoid that for you guys today, okay? Um, and then I just proceed. I just assume the sale at that point, basically. Your care, like you're just, your heartfelt care comes out in the posture at which you communicate, which is something that's inside of you, whom anyone can start to do. The nervousness in the beginning of this business is the uncertainty of what to do, right? And you've eradicated that personally by listening to Paul McLean and Matt Smith and top producers that you just repeat what they say. And then now have evolved this to a level where you know that if you don't get more emotional, you're not going to get the sale. If you don't get more emotional, you might get the sale, but then you get a chargeback or you might get the sale and then some agent will replace it. But if you get emotional and feel into their family and really talk and they get personal and go, you know what, he had a job that he had the policy at and then he lost the job and we just haven't gotten it yet. Or X multitude of things can come out. The way you present that by, by this is a part of success in life, guys, is genuinely caring about people. I feel like you care about my wife and she's not even here. And that's a powerful way to come across, but anything that anyone can, can emulate and just showing, Hey, listen, Bob and Mary, I really genuinely care if you don't get this, your these little cute kids that are playing on the floor with the Legos are going are not gonna be are not gonna be around. So that's just a it's a powerful, powerful way that you're coming across exuding the way you do. But it's something that you've it's taken time to hone. Did it take months and years? No, it seems like it took a couple, took a few hundred appointments, and all of a sudden you're like, this is gonna work. So what any advice you'd have for a new agent that's coming in like the first time they're going to start to get more emotional with people the the best thing you can do for the family the way i look at it is that's the one chance that family has because people are truly lazy with this stuff um if you go in that home and they somehow get you to leave without you pushing them you basically fail the family so this truly is the one chance most families truly will have. Like they don't fill out forms a thousand times over and over again and do it next month. They do it one time and they, they get bombarded. And if they don't handle it then, they're gonna have a bad taste in their mouth and not do this again. So the way I look at it is this one chance that I have, I'm, I'm gonna let it all out. I'm gonna put it all on the table for the family and truly let them know what it looks like. Because most people don't 
have any clue what it looks like to lose somebody um, to death. So if, if, if you're scared to say, Grady, when you die, if you died yesterday, what does that look like for your wife today? If you're scared to ask those questions, then you're being selfish. The, yeah. the, the worst thing that's going to happen is they tell you to leave their house. Um, and that's not that's probably not going to happen either. So the, my advice, I guess, would be get out, get over yourself. Um, and I say that respectfully, but get over yourself because this business we're in is, a, is, is one where we have to be selfless for the client. So get over yourself and ask the, the uncomfortable questions that's not only going to help the client, but also going to help you protect the client. So it's a win-win. Get the emotion out, ask the, ask the raw questions, and, and just put the family first. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic, man, because that's something that, you know, just a, a, a cohort and a colleague of yours, Easton Patton, talks about. He, he sits down for a very, very, almost, almost a mirror-like presentation, five, 10 minutes, and digs through the emotion and doesn't do a single thing until we find out what's the real reason we're putting this place, who's it going to protect, how is it going to work, and because of the things that will happen and the people buy you, they buy your passion, they buy your, well, your, is this what you wear to appointments? Yep. I, I, I decided to put on the t-shirt and, and blazer to match you just for, because I <laughs> got such good style, but you, you carry yourself well, which is something that, you know, and not, and not to, the goal of this is not to build up Toby to something that you, that we all can't become, but it's to look and say, this man has chosen to get great at his craft and he's great because he decided. And anyone can decide to become great also by just implementing things from other great producers. He said it himself, he's just learning from others and still listening to Paul McLean audios because Paul's a, Paul's a fantastic producer that we can all learn from. So Toby, I really appreciate you and digging into this. I'd love if you had any you know, final tips and total mindset, anything you have to share with, uh, with share with the group today. Yeah, Grady. Well, um, just thank you so much for having me, man. That was, that's, uh, that's the main thing. I'm, I'm grateful to be a part of the, of this team, this opportunity. Um, I can't even put it into words, but to, to wrap up, man, I would say I had moments of doubt where I, I, I was scared. Can I do it? Am I supposed to, you know, go into this family's house and get a check in on the one hour? Um, but when you hone into the psychology of what we do, families request your help. Um, our job is to literally not mess it up. Um, so I would say hone into training more to everybody, um, tap into training more, sell yourself so that you can sell the clients um, because you serve your best when you sell your best. So I, I would say just, just tap into training, um, sell yourself more, believe it more and, and work hard, buy leads, work hard. We talked on the phone earlier and I asked you what drives you. Would you share that with everyone? Yes, of course. Um, so I, I had mentioned a couple of things. For one, um, my family, I'm, I'm, I'm big into my family, the family that I have right now. Um, so my mother, my, 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 my father, my sister, my brother, um, I have, you know, I have specific things that I've said that I was going to do for them. Um, you know, like build a home back home, build a home back home for my mother and my father. So that's one big thing that pushes me to where I'm not, you know, comfortable at any point. And I, I never see myself getting comfortable. Um, second thing is just, I, I truly am scared of, of living an average life. I'm scared of, um, I'm scared of being, you know, being wasted potential. That's one of my biggest fears is wasted potential. I never want to say at the end of, um, April, I could have pushed a little harder, which I could have, but it's okay. But I never want to get to the end, you know, when I'm 50 years old or 70 years old and say, I could have taken more risk. I could have done a little bit harder. I could have worked harder. So for me, man, that's, that's what pushes me is, is obviously family, making sure my family is taken care of for life and making sure that I fulfill my purpose here. So. Perfect, bro. Well, you're doing a great job. We're very, I mean, I'm beyond proud of you. The company's proud of you. You're proud of yourself. So now, but it's just, you know, and at the same standpoint, it's proud, but never satisfied, right? You don't read your own flesh, you're as humble as could be. And your whole goal is to go out there, protect families, and then start teaching others how to do it yourself. And I know you're going to build a massive team here. A bunch of, a bunch of average people, a bunch of humble people who have decided to become above average and work hard and then help others become the same. And uh, you're, a, you're, a, um, you're a true insight into what's possible if anyone decides to, to get over their fears of, 
of, of, of, of fake fears of that clients are going to be mean to them and people aren't going to let them in the house. And when they answer the phone, they're going to yell and dial the phone like you mean it and setting a big goal to protect your family and make yourself proud, man. So we're cheering you on. Um, and I love, uh, I love everything you're doing, man, buddy. I appreciate thank you. Thank you so much. Send them off any final words to the crew and we'll, we'll end it with you. Thank you. Thank you, Grady. I appreciate everybody. Um, let's crush it next week. So thank you guys. Appreciate it. All right. Bye for now, everybody. Thanks, All Toby. Right.